three viewers. Okay, I think um, we are starting. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Indira Jeffrey. I am the program manager for the Dream Builder uh, program. And Dream Builder is a um, online um, platform that offers uh, online uh, courses to uh, teach the skills and knowledge uh, to start and grow your own business. The classes are interactive and convenient for any schedule, and they are available both in Spanish and English. Dream Builder was created in partnership with Thunderbird School of Global Management and our sponsors, Freeport McMahon. Uh, we are providing now, and actually today we are very happy to share with you that this is the first webinar that Dream Builder is offering. And uh, we have a very special guest today, Rick Parada. Uh, Rick is a um, Thunderbird School of Global Management alumni. Uh, he graduated in 2012. And uh, we have the privilege that uh, Rick is kicking off the um, webinars for Dream Builder. Uh, so, uh, with no further ado, Rick Parada, uh, please uh, introduce yourself and thank you very much for uh, being here today with us. Great, thank you, Indira. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you guys and especially being an, an, an Ola alumni uh, from Thunderbird. So, I'm going to get started with a video. Uh, this talk, it's about, well, we are not in digital, right? So, we have to move all or businesses and all the strategy, strategy and everything uh, because of the pandemic. So what, what's next? What's this new reality? Uh, what are we heading to? And from that standpoint, uh, let's take a look into the new trends and everything uh, to survive during this uh, new reality, all right? So I'm gonna uh, show you a video of who we are in Qatar. I, I am the founder and also the digital manager, digital director of the Qatar. The Qatar is a uh, only one marketing agency that is based in Mexico, but we, we also are in the U.S. Actually, in Phoenix. So uh, we have worked with many clients uh, in the U.S. We work with Trek Bikes, uh, LiftMaster, Chamberlain Group, uh, along other companies. So uh, with that information, I, I put together this uh, special keynote. So let's get started. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is the look and feel of the agency. As I told you before, I'm the founder and also the digital director of Ecotar. Uh, we have been in the market for more than 12 years, so we have worked with many transnationals and also small businesses in Mexico and Latin America and also in the U.S. I'm also a marketing professor. Actually, my first experience as a professor was with Thunderbird. Uh, right now, uh, I've, I collaborate with Universidad Panamericana and also Tech de Monterrey here in Mexico. Uh, I'm an in-market analyst uh, for Aeromonitor International, uh, which is based in Chicago. And I have also worked with other companies like Church in the White uh, and also uh, in Paramount Pictures to release new TV series and, and movies. So it has been a fun ride. Uh, this is part of our uh, clients. As I told you before, we work with many international companies, but we also work with a small uh, businesses that are trying to uh, look for new ways to interact and also in, in new ways to push out their product and services and obviously make a business out of it. Uh, right now, at Qatar here in Mexico, uh, we are uh, the 19 digital agency uh, in the country. And well, uh, we have done like many, many uh, projects and, and all that stuff. And uh, well, it is my pleasure to be with you guys. I love uh, teach out uh, communications and marketing classes. So this is gonna, th this has to be fun. So since we are in Zoom and well, and this is a live stream, I cannot see you guys, but I hope to get in touch with you. Uh, here is my Instagram account. And also I'm placing my email in case you guys have any other doubt after we finish uh, this, uh, this session all right so we are in digital right so but what's next what's coming uh what do we have to know in order to uh really come up with a great strategy to survive so everything has to do with knowledge at the end of the things so to get started uh think about this what is the name of the youngest generation in the world and it's not about millennials it's not about Generation C, it's about Generation T. Uh, and the Generation T comes because of the touch, because they change the way uh, they have interacted with, uh, with the technology, right? So uh, my baby born, uh, which is about to turn one year old, is using my phone, for example, to, to, I don't know, to survive in the morning uh, till we are fully awake, for, for an, an example. I have another kid that is five years old and well, he controls every, my iPad in the best way that I don't know how to do it. So that's why we call them Generation T. But right now, or Generation Touch, but right now with everything that is going on in the world, this generation is changing its name to Generation COVID or uh, pandemic because they will change everything in the future. Uh, as you know, in this, the, and, and this is like uh, from, a, from a global perspective, uh, kids that are going through elementary school and also junior high, uh, their lives have changed in so many ways. I'm not saying that we have not changed. We have changed a lot because we have to adapt ourselves to, to make business, right? To, to, to survive, to provide our family with whatever we have to provide. But uh, our kids or these guys, uh, they are the most impacted because their way of life has changed. They cannot go to, to school at full. Uh, they cannot go to malls at full. They cannot go to their, prefer their preferred stores. They cannot go to parks. And this is something that will change forever, right? Because we are behind them, telling them to wash their hands, telling them to use Lysol for their clothes. We are telling them that they have to connect for, I don't know, one hour, two hours, five hours, eight hours a day to keep going with their school. So this has a huge impact on them and they will change many things in the near future once they are like uh, working, for example. And uh, this new generation or generation COVID, uh, they will have new habits. And right now it's a great time to start looking into them and to start to understand them. 
in order to provide or coming up with new ways to provide communications in terms of your brand, in terms of your business. Um, did you know that each generation in the world is defined by the most relevant event, but it's one relevant event. And I'm gonna show you one. Actually, we are comparing generation uh, COVID with this generation. And this generation, if you can see into all the graphics, it's a generation that it's called Generation S or uh, the silence generation. They are the kids who suffered the Second World World War and uh, we are comparing many new habits with them. Uh, for example, uh, our kids right now are the first generation that are suffering uh, to not be able to go out as they used to do two months ago or as they used to do in Christmas or New Year's Eve, for example. Uh, so uh, right now in the world, we're seeing new policies in each country. For example, here in Mexico, uh, we are in the first or in the serial phase of the of coming out, coming now uh, to the rehabilitated economy. So, for example, all the kids have to stay at their homes. So we're comparing them with Generation X, with, with Generation S. I mean, because they have a lot of restrictions going on in their their daily lives. So uh, the COVID generation uh, are the kids that are, that are adapting their lifestyle through different stages of the pandemic. I know like in the US, uh, you guys are moving uh, or are ahead like two to three weeks uh, in terms of Mexico. But for example, in China and Japan, uh, they are like three months away from us. So uh, we are starting, of, we are like taking a better conscious that we have to study what's going on with the countries that are, are, are heading into other economic stages. So with that information, we can come up with a strategies right now to help out businesses that are starting to have a, a huge impact because they are, uh, they're going into bankruptcy, uh, they're closing or uh, they're fire, firing their employees. So, uh, this generation is specifically Generation COVID or uh, Generation Z. Uh, they are at the very end adapting to a new way of life. And we can see many changes. This is a picture. Uh, I took this like uh, two months ago and I was going into the supermarket to buy my Diet Coke. And I was in shock because not only to toilet paper was out of the stock, but also uh, diet coke and that didn't make sense at the very beginning at, at, at that specific moment i still uh try to recall this and said like i i don't understand human humans i don't understand why we uh make a global shortage of toilet paper and now coke uh and i believe this this is a video that you guys will uh will relate to because this talks about what happened at costco two months ago when you guys started uh, to close out uh, their way of life. Hundreds of shoppers rush into a Los Angeles Costco this morning with this warning. Supplies are being rationed to keep up with the unprecedented coronavirus panic shopping. Customers run down store aisles at full speed and then quickly start loading up their carts. Within moments of this Costco opening, a sea of shoppers came back to this area where the water and paper goods are stored. Our camera crews were allowed exclusive access inside the store before it opened. This Costco is getting deliveries around the clock, as you can see a lot of water and paper goods, and within an hour, all of this will be gone. All part-time employees are working full-time shifts. Merchandise stocker Hector Flores says he's never seen demand like this, even on Black Friday. It's just hectic. As you can see, the stock in this high. It's never been this high. These products have come from the dock. We're backed up just a bit. Is it a nightmare to keep all of this in stock? It, it goes quick. General Manager Thad Kalez says customers were waiting up to three hours for supplies to be restocked. So now some products are limited to two items each. Right now there is a limit on paper goods, uh, all tissues, uh, paper towels, and water. 
At checkout, hundreds of shoppers, some wearing masks, are eager to take their ration supplies home. Why are you stocking up? Are you are you concerned? Very. So what have you come here to buy? Water, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, canned goods. <laughs> So this was craziness, right? Uh, Gen COVID is the first generation that will suffer rationing. And I have seen many studies that, that, that are saying that right now meat in the US is being rationed in some states and some uh, supermarkets or wholesalers. So as we can see, we have changed. Uh, we have increased, uh, we have seen an increase of 40% in toilet paper, in, to, in the toilet paper uh, industry, which is crazy. And also, this is also something that had, had to happen. We have an increase of 162% uh, of transactions for e-commerce. Right now, if, if you are someone that is selling a, a, a product, I mean, uh, and you are not on the internet in some way uh, to facilitate the way up uh, your consumer can purchase it, uh, you are in trouble, right? Because uh, not every store is opening. Uh, we see a lot of restrictions. And well, with this, uh, we have seen an increase in changes in the way we used to do business. Um, and I believe this does not also apply to these categories. I'm gonna show you another one that I believe we can relate to since we are connected uh, through different screens. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, you're shot down in May. like the message is like really clear right like we are suffering it's not we are connected uh i believe everyone who has a cell phone tablet or computer and we are working from home we have poor uh internet service we have uh many problems in terms of technology because we are adapting we were not, we were not there to be uh 24 7 connected uh and working and it's been like crazy. So we have changed and we will be changing everything uh, from now on till there is a vaccine. Uh, and I believe even though when there will be a new vaccine, we will have changed many uh, in so many ways that uh, we're not coming back to the point that we were like two or three months ago. So what's next? Uh, what's coming for, uh, for your digital strategy? And um, the trends that we are seeing in social media, in the way brands are trying to connect, it's with knowledge, it's with empathy, it's with purpose and agility. And many studies said that this concept, these four concepts are key for success, are key to engage, are key to be connected. So 91% of the people, uh, this is a study from Sprout uh, Social, which is a social media pl platform based in Chicago. Uh, they conducted a, a, a study and they discovered that people uh, or, or connected user wants social media to really, to, to really help out with the way we connect because at the end we are alone. I'm alone in my office right now. And well, I feel long alone right so we want social media to help out with this and we want brands to help us reach out to another uh, to another people so i'm going to show you an example this is trek uh this is the landing page of trek here in mexico and two two weeks ago we launched a new campaign that says go by bike 
and it's about you using your uh, your bicycle to move uh, from point one to point two to point three to point four to point five because uh, the bikes are going to be a new way to move from one point to another. I'm not saying that we're not going to be using our car anymore. No, but we will be changing our, our habits because we need to do exercise. We need to, to be mindful. Uh, we need peace of mind. So a good way to do everything and to help out the environment, which is another a huge trend, it's uh, by, by, by moving by bike. So uh, Go By Bike is an initiative from Trek, uh, and it doesn't matter the brand that you use to move. Uh, we are inviting the consumer, the user, or social media uh, guy, girl, to jump into the, into the bike, uh, post whatever they are doing, they're moving from one point to another with a hashtag that it's Go By Bike, and then share it with the world. Because what we want is people to connect. And this is like the global uh, main page. Actually, this is from the US. And as we can see, uh, there are uh, several uh, posts that come out from not only the US, not only Mexico, but from the India, from um, South Africa, from, from Brazil, for example. Uh, there is no a copy that it's not only in English, it's uh, in Italian, for example. It's in, I don't know, Japanese or Chinese or whatever. So what we want is to engage and we need to engage because we are being left out in our offices, we're really being left out in our homes. Uh, we're not connecting as we used to. Uh, so this is a huge thing. And as brands try to understand this message, I believe Trek has put uh, their self there to connect. And this is a way to help out the world. Uh, at Trek, we're not selling a bike right now. We are just selling whoever has a bike to jump in. Uh, another strategy that, that we have seen is this. Uh, would you like to join a Zoom meeting with someone that you don't know? I believe uh, in the first, when, you, when someone asks you this, I believe like the first uh, response will be obviously no, because who is the other guy, right? But uh, with, uh, with this study, uh, what they find out, it's like around 80% of the consumer want brands to help them out uh, make a real connection with another one, uh, with another consumer that they don't know. So uh, at first, uh, I was looking into other examples uh, from the US and I found something that, that shocked me. Uh, this brand uh, has managed to gather around five, uh, 500 million impressions and they have also helped out raise help uh, and relief funds with empathy. And this brand is Chipotle. So when the whole pandemic started, uh, they decided to, make, to, to help out by making groups of different people uh, to make them connect through a Zoom meeting. And with this initiative, uh, they have, they have uh, without any budget uh, or additional advertising budget, they, they really figure out a way to connect. And I'm gonna show you a video about this. People aren't hanging out in real life while practicing social distancing due to the coronavirus pandemic. So Chipotle is providing a way to hang out virtually. The fast casual chain will host daily Chipotle together virtual lunchtime hangouts on meeting application Zoom, featuring celebrity guests and up to 3000 fans. The links will be made available via Chipotle's Twitter feed. Colton Underwood of The Bachelor will host the first Chipotle Together Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, during which he will chat with fans and walk them through a Chipotle-inspired presentation. The chain is also offering free delivery on all orders of $10 via its app and website during the month of March, and it is responding to the coronavirus with steps including delivery kitchens with dedicated teams and ingredient stations to prepare digital orders, new tamper-evident packaging, and a delivery tracker in its app to provide customers with step-by-step real-time updates. At the end, it's a new initiative, right? It's thinking outside the box. It's thinking about a different way to engage a different way to connect with each one. And by creating these groups, uh, they, have, they have helped uh, raise out funds, but they, they have also helped the end consumer feel a relief 
feel connected uh, and with everything that is going on with the social distancing, I believe as a brand, it's a huge ch challenge to keep that conversation and everything. I'm gonna show you another example. This is a brand that it's called Hims. It's from the US as well. And it's a product that, it's a brand that has um, shakes, has vitamins for men. And uh, they came out with uh, support groups with therapists. So if you don't feel good, you just uh, click in, uh, register yourself, uh, send your, uh, your questions and everything. And a therapist will go through each one of those uh, questions. Obviously, our, all that information is anonymous. So I believe it's a great example. And well, if, you, if we can see all these initiatives were something new, uh, keeping uh, up a sense of mindfulness, but at the end is looking into the box and looking outside of it. It's changing the way you connect, changing the message, changing the way, what you want. What you want as a brand is not to push out the sale of the product or the service, but to help out that consumer. Studies uh, from the last decade ha has shown that 80% of the people who interact in social media with a brand will make a purchase. So right now, this makes more sense than in any time uh, in, in, in the last decade. If, you, if we come up with a great strategy to connect, to make that consumer engage, that consumer will show up, will uh, purchase your product and your services, but it's about changing the, the strategy and it's thinking about outside the, the box. 50% uh, of the digital consumer uh, says that uh, they approve brands running normal advertising. But uh, something that it's uh, fun, it's what, what we want as a consumer when we are logging into our Facebook accounts, uh, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, it's to look how our brands are helping out, not the way they are pushing their service or their product, but what, what are your initiatives to help out with the pandemic and everything? So as we can see, uh, I divided and I, and I placed two columns. The first one is about learning. So brands providing practical information and tips which help people to deal with the situation uh, reaches out around 60% of approval. In the other side, uh, if we look into the products, 70% said that they approve brands running normal advertising, uh, selling out their products and their services. So, so we are open, with, but at the end, we want brands to let us know how they are changing or helping out the world. We have to remember, and this really shocked me when I was starting this, it's that a third of the total population is in lockdown. So just think about that per eye that has to come up with uh, a strategy, report, morning call, revision, whatever. And well, this is a guy who has their pet and who has their kids around. Uh, but at the end, we are adapting, right? We are there now. So we have to think about that consumer. Who is that? Which generation he is? Does he or she have a better kid uh, who is around them? How can we help him, her out to have a better day? So with that in mind, we can come up with a content strategy that helps out engage. Uh, what do you guys think about the following terms? Flexibility, free, or stop the production line. And when, when I have talked about this with other brands, they are like, what, are you seriously? And I, I'm, I'm telling them, yes, I'm seriously. Uh, according to, to studies, and this is from another study that takes place with, uh, with a site that, that it's called Global Index. They conducted the study uh, in 10 countries around the world and they find out that the that the people who were uh, survived, uh, it, that, it, that feeling the, the survey, I mean, uh, said that 81% of them think brands should offer free services. So I'm placing a couple of examples here. Uh, the first one is Grupo Posadas, which is a huge uh, hotel group, and they are offering 11 free nights to the doctors that are fighting everything at hospitals. And I'm gonna show you another one that it's called, that it's from Airbnb, which I believe you already know, and the Red Cross. They are partnership 
uh, also to provide free nights to those people who are in the front line of uh, fighting the whole COVID and hospitals and doctors and nurses and everyone there. So it's a way to think differently, right? Uh, but you don't have to be like this huge transnational company or national one. Uh, this is a local brand here in Guadalajara where I'm located that it's called Pollo Pepe. It's a, a small franchise of rostisserie, rostisserie I mean, and they are giving uh, food for free uh, when you register. So it's a small initiative, but at the end, it has an impact with the consumer that normally goes there, right? So that's something that we as consumer want from brands. Uh, the other study says that around 70% 70, 70 of the global consumer believes companies should stop the production line and change to provide essential, essential supplies. This is an example of a brand that I love that it's called Carrera, uh, which are uh, sunglasses and other uh, stuff. And they decided to stop the production line uh, to come up with uh, these mask faces uh, shields to help down those people who are there in the hospital. So it's uh, they're losing a lot of money, uh, obviously, but at the end they are they are showing that they are doing something. So what we have also found out during this kind of crisis is that uh, in some point during the near future, uh, their business will have an increase of sales. Right now, it's really complicated for this kind of uh, luxury industry. 83% of the digital consumer believes companies should offer flexible payments. Uh, and I don't know guys, but I would love Spotify, Netflix, and Uber to tell me like, okay, don't worry, let's, let's give you, I don't know, for, for free, for uh, months for free. And in the fifth or sixth, uh, you can pay, pay up what you have uh, consumed. It will be great, right? Uh, but it's really hard for many companies to implement this because at the end it will, uh, or their, their cash flow will suffer. But that's something that we would like. And I'm gonna show you the examples in different countries. Uh, another trend, and this is, uh, this is also that, I, that really shocked me, is that if the government is not doing whatever they have to do to fight uh, the COVID-19, then companies should step in. We want the CEOs to provide, to push out their message, to push out an agenda, to help out our world, our country, our local city. And um, at the very, very beginning, when I was reading this and studying this, I thought that this was related with third world countries. But uh, it showed me that this is from the US, it is from the UK, it is from Japan, it is from Brazil as well. So if the government is, is not doing something, then companies should. And um, for example, in China, 81% uh, of the Chinese said that they want free services in many categories. And Italy and Spain, if you see the, the percentages, uh, they want, uh, they want uh, stores that are not essential to close out, to prevent the spread and to prevent uh, that this, that whatever happened to them during the past two months uh, could have stopped as the way that it spread. For example, in Italy, uh, they said the Italians want uh, companies to stop, step, stop the production. Um, and in that way to produce other supplies to help out the world, to help out their country, to help out their city. So for example, here in Mexico, with everything that is going on with their government, uh, there is a new, a new group that it's called Frena and they want uh, companies to join in to stop the or president uh, in order to make a huge change in the near future because of the way that uh, here in Mexico this uh, crisis has been handled. So with this information, what's next for the consumer? What we are expecting? First of all, it's uh, a huge new trend that it's called sustainability. And it's not now about green or eco-conscious audiences. It's about the world. Um, everything that has happened to us globally has shown us that our world needed a break, right? Because of pollution, because uh, the garbage, because of the trash, because uh, 
uh, of the mass production of uh, products or um, vegetables or cows or whatever. So right now, a huge, huge, huge trend, it's about sustainability. And I'm gonna show you an example that, it, that maybe you cannot relate to, but at the end you will get it. So uh, I believe that anyone who has a plan to travel, that plan has been affected, right? If you wanted to run the London Marathon, well, that's not happening. If you wanted to run the Boston Marathon, that's not gonna happen again. If I wanted to bring my kids to Disneyland on summer, that's not happening because there are no flights from Mexico to the US. So now this has changed. And right now we're focusing on a staycation as a concept. So 80% of the people who had uh, uh, travel has changed that travel to now stay locally or travel uh, domestically. And it's a huge impact because uh, at the end, we're not gonna be flying and that's gonna help out the environment, which will take us back to the sustainability. If I'm not using my car, then I will move by bike and then I will help out the sustainability and the environment at the very end. So everything is it's connected. One in five people in the US who have never had a domestic vacation are now planning to have one. Uh, so once again, we are changing and this industry specifically, all the flights and everything in the travel industry is being affected uh, by the most because we're not moving. We're conducting everything right now through whatever city we are. I would love to have traveled to Phoenix to give you this talk, but well, coronavirus happened, right? So 80% of, of, of the people in the world are changing their travel plans, their, their travel plans. Three out of 10 are planning in, in the new, 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 trend, new trend about staycation. Three in 10 are looking into a domestic or local travel. Uh, and at the very end, uh, around 60% 60, 60 of the people who were survived at this are saying that they will travel once again, once they feel safe. And safety, it's a huge thing. And it's our new top of mind. If I don't feel safe, I won't, I won't do it. I won't do it. Uh, and I can give you an example. I wanted to go like out like two weeks ago with my wife. And I told her, well, the economy is like getting started. The government is taking these new policies with restaurants and bars and everything. So why don't we go out to have dinner? Just one hour, let's go. And my wife, said like, I don't feel safe, then no, J just grab dinner or let's make some dinner here. Let's stay in the, in the house. And th this brings me back to the safety world. If a brand cannot tell the end consumer that they will be safe, that consumer won't go back to that specific brand. Uh, and I'm going to show you another example that it's happening right now in Whole Foods and Costco. All right. Before you hit up the grocery store today, we're going to tell you which one has the best COVID-19 safety measures. It's actually the focus of a new study release. And WPTV News Channel 5's Cameron Eppinger joins us live with details on which ones came out on top. Hey, Cam. <clears throat> well, Mike, this will be something good to know the next time you head out to your local grocery store, as you mentioned, especially to now that we're in hurricane season, you may need to stock up on some supplies. Now, this study was actually conducted by a research group called Ipsos. It's headquartered in France, but they have locations all throughout the U.S. And it simply uh, compared safety precautions among several different retailers. And in at number one was none other than Whole Foods Market, like you see here behind me. For the survey, shoppers visited nearly 6,000 retailers across the U.S. The study revealed 98% of employees wore face coverings inside all while 91% followed social distancing guidelines with customers. Whole Foods also outperformed other retailers for its number of plexiglass partitions and contactless payment methods. As far as the other grocery stores, Costco came in at number two, and Trader Joe's round out the top three. For now, reporting live in Wellington, Kimberly Leppinger, WPTV News Channel 5. So at the very end, uh, this is uh, an example that I believe everyone can relate to. If you go to the grocery store, to Costco, to the supermarket, Walmart, whatever, Target, and if they show you that they have all these safety measures, then you're gonna feel less concerned. 
Therefore, you will prefer do your shopping at those specific uh, chains that go into another one that does not have all these healthy measures. So here in Mexico, for example, Costco is doing this great job. They take your temperature, uh, all the carts are clean, sanitized, you enter Costco and you have uh, Clorox wipes, uh, you have uh, antibacterial as well for your hands and you go through each one of the aisles and when you, you could have a contact with an employee, they are wearing a face mask uh, and a cover as well. And when you go to the register to pay, there, is, there are safety measured uh, points. And once that you go into the cashier, uh, there are like uh, plastic covers in the cashier so that you don't have that specific contact. Uh, they are pushing out for contactless uh, payment options. So I believe they are killing it here. Uh, therefore, uh, I feel safer. Therefore, I will, go, I will still go to Costco. Uh, another change that is going on is that 15% uh, of, the, of the global consumer is saying that they will not go to any store, not in the short term, nor in the long term, until they, they feel safe. So this is huge. This has a huge impact on the economy. Uh, in the U.S., as you have seen, there are many stores and huge change uh, going into Chapter 11 and back uh, and bankruptcy, and they're uh, closing out stores. And there are like many many trends uh, that we are changing. The global consumer is changing. So we want those specific experiences that we used to live in the in a normal mode now taking place in digital taking place in that specific landing page that you decide that you designed in that specific e-commerce uh someone that i believe it's killing it it's called massimo duty massimo duty it's a brand from in the uh they are from europe and if you log into their platform if you download their app uh you really have this cool, uh, nice experience of the brand. So uh, as brands are looking into this specific trends, they are trying to come up with, uh, with new experiences that go on uh, online right now. Um, for example, uh, one of my clients is Universal Pictures and in the US they decided to roll out uh, Trolls, the second movie, uh, digital. So you can rent it and they made a uh, hundred million dollars, which I believe is great. Uh, and just to take a reference, the first troll movie uh, reached out to a box office of a hundred and fifty million dollars. So right now, uh, trolls two are really close to that specific uh, target. So what this is saying to the industry is that you can change that specific model. Uh, people doesn't necessarily need to go to the movie theater. This is something specifically for the US. Here in Mexico, it's a huge, totally different story. Uh, we go to the theater uh, with our family and to have a specific time with our kids. So uh, Cinemex, which is a, a huge brand uh, that has uh, movie theaters, they are uh, starting to roll out uh, parking lots with movie with a movie experience. So you pay around I don't know, uh, fifteen dollars uh, for your whole family for for uh, family members, and you can enjoy that specific movie. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, there is a food truck. Uh, they can deliver your favorite uh, popcorn, and you can have that specific uh, experience. So we are changing. And this whole pandemic is changing us. So uh, looking into Google Trends, for example, this is Mexico once again. Uh, this is a trend about training at home because we're not going anymore to the gym or to the studio or whatever. So training at home took a huge spike, obviously, uh, when, when the country decided to lock down and people will have to move and brands or and owners of different studios it doesn't matter if it was a boutique one or a box one they decided to jump in into providing uh, new ways to train but not all not, not only making you uh sweat but also they are giving you uh food classes they are they are teaching yoga they're coming up with 
new classes about mindfulness because at the end we need it because we are in our homes, right? Uh, one in four uh, of, of the professionals are planning to stay at home or their companies are planning to change the way uh, we used to, to work. Uh, Twitter uh, was the first uh, brand that made a huge statement like a month ago and they said like, okay, if you are working for us, you don't need to come back, come back once again to the headquarter. You can work from home anytime you want, as long as you are in Twitter. So they were the first one and we were, we, and it was huge, right? Uh, because everyone was planning at some point to return to the office. But right now, we don't know what that new normality will be like. As I told you in the very beginning, I'm a professor at, at uh, Universidad Panamericana here in Mexico, which is a huge uh, university. And yesterday we have a professor meeting to close up uh, the semester. And they were telling us that uh, they were planning and having the full workforce work for one week and then rest two. Well, not rest two, but work from home two weeks. And that, that will be like the new way to go back once again to the campus. And for the students, uh, well, once that everything started here in Mexico, obviously everything will have, uh, all the students took classes online. And for the next, sem the next semester that starts here in Mexico on August, August the 3rd, uh, the student is free to don't come up anymore to the classroom. Uh, they are free to take all the classes online. Uh, they are free to come back to the classes if they want to. Uh, they are trying to come up with an hybrid uh, way of taking classes. And this is huge, it's huge. It's so relevant that everything is changing. Uh, four in 10, we'll do more online shopping. Uh, right now in the US, uh, around 200 million uh, people from 14 to 45 uh, years old are doing their first, second, third, or their daily life uh, shopping experience. And I was, Amazon is one of the examples of, of a company that is growing so fast because of this new trend. 46% of the fast food eaters and 49% of the regular restaur restaurant goer right now they are cooking at home. So the restaurants are trying to come up with a new way to survive, right? Because at the end they will have to pay for rent, employees and everything, and for the food. So many restaurants here in Mexico and in Latin America are uh, sending out uh, packages so that the, this kind of consumer can uh, cook their own meal and try to have like the, the, the same flavor as if they went into that specific restaurant. So as we can see uh, with the example of Chipotle, for example, change are changing, we are changing, but at the very end, we are adapting. One in two of the gym goer uh, will be staying at home even with when the club it, it, it's opening. And 50% uh, out of them are planning to cancel their memberships. Uh, and just to give you uh, a, some, a, a, a data that I find out about Zoom, uh, which is the app that I'm connected to, it's that Zoom in December have, had around 10 million uh, monthly meetings. And in April, they close up to 300 million uh, meetings. So it's, it's huge. The challenge here, it's to adapt. So we have to adapt. The reality that we, we used to live, um, I, I don't think we're come, going back to that. I believe we will be changing. And because of this uh, safety word, safety top of mind, unless your brand shows me that I'm safe and that I won't get COVID, I will go. But if you cannot provide that, then you have to come up with this digital strategy with the, your e-commerce, your website, your landing page, your e-learning platform, so that I can have like a, a similar experience, a digital experience. And that, that's the most, uh, and that's your challenge. And that's our challenge as an agency. That's my challenge as a brand. It's to adapt, it's to understand, it's to 
look into the trends. It's to look in the ways other countries are uh, heading to because uh, specifically in Asia, they start the three months uh, before all of us. To close up uh, this uh, talk, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, ad that I love. So let's remember we're humans, let's remember there is hope and let's try to make the world a better one. So thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for the guys who called uh, jumping into the webinar. Uh, once again, thank you, Dream Builder. It is my pleasure to be with you guys. And well, if you have any doubt and you want to chat in with me, I'm uh, letting you uh, my Instagram account, my LinkedIn account, and also the Instagram of the agency. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rick. It was a very informative session. And uh, every time I see any of your participations, uh, you amaze me. You are one of the best experts <laughs> ever. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. And you know that I love uh, coming up with this uh, new keynotes and talks and everything. So um, thank you to, to be with you guys. Thank you so much. Yes, and um, we have some questions, but I think we don't have enough time to answer them, so we will answer the questions later. But I, I have uh, just one that um, I would like uh, to have your input, and that is, um, you know, for a, for a small business that is um, going digital, what it would be the best as advice on how they can go if they if you suggest them to just go all the way straight to digital or they can go um you know by face by step by step or what do you recommend i believe that you should consider consider digital in your in in this first phase it doesn't matter if you will have a physical uh, point for the consumer to, to go in. Uh, we don't know what will happen during the next month. So if we look into the data from China, there are some uh, cities that are, that are having like a second uh, revamp of the COVID and everything and they're being in lockdown. So all the studies said that maybe during October, November and December, there will be like a second phase and we will be back in our homes. Uh, so if we want to survive, we are right now in that specific time for any brand to prepare. Uh, at the very end, we can see that all generations, it doesn't matter if it's generation C, millennial, senior, X, or even baby boomer, they are adapting and they are in digital most of the time because we are in the, in jumping from one screen to another, right? From the Netflix to Spotify to my computer to my tablet, for, to my phone, to my kid's tablet, to my kid's phone, we are there. So your brand needs to be online. And yeah. there are like many uh, services uh, that, can, that, that can help you out uh, create this specific uh, experience. If you want to build up an e-commerce site, 
you can jump in with Shopify. We work with Shopify. Uh, we are their business partner and it's a really easy way to come up with that specific e-commerce without having to invest uh, so much of your money. Uh, at the end, obviously, it depends on your budget. If you need an agency or if you need to hire something for your company or if you can do it by yourself. Also, uh, WordPress is a great uh, company that helps you out build landing pages or your website also your e-commerce. So re let's remember that, that it depends on the strategy. Uh, for example, uh, two weeks ago, Facebook released um, something that it's called Facebook Shops. Uh, you can Google it. And it's a way uh, that Facebook is trying to help out any brand to sell out their products or their services to Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, everything is connected. So it's free and you can build up your own e-commerce. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much for the advice, actually. Um, I think um, uh, all the small business uh, will ap are appreciating your, your participation and you. all your ideas and your insight. And um, it was a, an honor to have you today and hopefully it's not the, the last time. Um, I know you have your company in, in Mexico, but um, you, you have clients all over the world, right? Yes, yes. And we can help out build whatever you guys uh, who are watching this uh, live streaming um, built up that specific digital strategy, all right? So you have my, my information and we can chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you again, Rick. And Jane, I would like- everyone. Thank you. I would like to end this session. Uh, yes, stating one more time um, something that you say and uh, during the, the one of the last um, one of the last words that you say in your or in your presentation. You say at least your brand shows me what I am safe. I will choose you. So I think that's very very true because. Uh, if your brand shows that I will be safe, right? I'm going to buy from you, but you need to take your business digital. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you again. Uh, thank you everyone who joined us today. And we will be um, showing this kind of sessions uh, related to business and topics every Wednesday. So please stay tuned and um, yes, uh, to remind you, you can go to dreambuilder.org and um, find out about this um, free online business platform. Thank you and um, we'll see you soon.